And good morning. Um, welcome into another scoreboard show. I've done a couple of these at night, but I'm doing one in the morning because I had a late night. I was up at uh, Bone Town, spell that with two O's, over in uh, North Central. The Knights uh, lost a tough one to Buford, 48-6. to We'll talk about that game very briefly. In the grand scheme, uh, not a huge game uh, that I covered last night, but we'll get into some of that. We'll look at the scores, recaps, my immediate thoughts. I still haven't seen all the scores from last night. Um, I pretty much went straight to bed. Uh, I do know a lot of uh, region champions. Um, I know the big scores, but I haven't seen every single one. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't know every single playoff matchup. I know a couple. (coughs) Pardon me, I will be coughing today. I do know a couple of playoff matchups, but I don't know every single one. The brackets are not out yet. I think we're just going to do a little uh, playoff bracket show when they come out Monday, Tuesday. We'll do one around there. I'll just do a live show and look at the brackets to give you my thoughts there. But uh, tonight was an interesting night in high school football, especially in the Midlands area. There were a couple of upsets. Um, There were a couple games that uh, jumped out to me. Uh, Again, I've only seen a few scores, uh, but let's just go ahead and run through it. Uh, First thing I want to say is our pretty much game of the week uh, that we had on the rundown uh, on the podcast was Brooklyn Casey and Airport, and Brooklyn Casey shut out the Airport Eagles. This was a rivalry game, uh, as you all know, and this was a game in which it was all on the line. Both teams came in undefeated in region play, and Brooklyn Casey shut out the Airport Eagles, making the sweep on the season. They beat them earlier in the year. And Brooklyn Casey will take that region. That is region 5-4A. Uh, so Brooklyn Casey in the lower state. They're going to have a tough draw in that lower state in 4A. That's that's a tough place to come out of. Uh, but Brooklyn Casey plays really good defense. Uh, they uh, got Will Way on offense. He's kind of a do-it-all guy. Uh, need a little better quarterback play, I think, if they're going to make a run. But that defense is good enough to keep them in it and compete week in and week out. I saw some audio from Rusty Sharpie. The coach of the Brooklyn Casey Bearcats, uh, always an interesting soundbite. Uh, I've always liked that guy. Uh, and he said something interesting just to, to kind of circle. He said that there has been talks of combining Airport and Brooklyn Casey, both the schools, which would in turn combine the football program and make it 5A. That is very interesting to me. You've got two very proud schools, traditions, programs there in BC and Airport. Uh, a lot of alums there. I'm curious if that happens. I mean, they've got the stadium to play in. That new stadium over Brooklyn Casey, gorgeous stadium, practically brand new. I think it's three, four years old. <clears throat> so uh, keep an eye on that. Rusty Sharp, you mentioned that in his comments. Okay, so Brooklyn Casey shuts out airport. Uh, good for the Bearcats. Uh, let's move on to a couple other scores that jumped out to me. River Bluff beating Lexington. This was for second place in that region behind Dutch Fort and in for a home playoff game. I expected Lexington to come in here, play good defense like they have all season long, uh, shut down that running game, but they didn't. Braden Walker had a huge night, had 181 yards rushing. 140 of that came in the second half. Braden Walker headed to play for the Citadel, one of my favorite running backs that I have seen in the state of South Carolina. Personally, no offense to the Citadel Bulldogs, but I think he's better than the Citadel. Uh, I think he's a... uh, uh, maybe a, a low tier power five back. I think he's that good. Um, I actually thought maybe a coastal Carolina early on and then, you know, ended up being in the Citadel. Um, but man, oh man, uh, I know coastal was looking at him. I know Wofford was looking at him, uh, but I think he's a power five back. I think he's that good. Um, especially if he adds a little muscle. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so river bluff gets the, uh, home game in second place. They won that game 32 to 20. So let's look at some of the other scores. Just again, just kind of running them down. My immediate thoughts of what I see: Palmetto over Pickens, forty-two to twenty. Uh, Lower Richland over Orangeburg Wilkinson, twenty-five fourteen. I said in my article on ColaDaily.com that was going to be a tricky game. Lower Richland, though, uh, congratulations to them. They win the region championship. Rodney Barr has done a great job with the Diamond Hornets. That is not the easiest place to win. I think some people would consider that an inner city high school along with the Columbias and the Keenans. Uh, They're right there on the outskirts. I'm not sure if people would consider that inner city or not, but they're right there in that category. Rodney Barr's just done a great job. There's some tradition there uh, at Lower Richland, and uh, good for them. They win the region championship. They will get the one seed. I think that's the first time 
Uh, no, second time in three years they won the region, so good for LR. Uh, let's see here. Great Falls over Timminsville, 20-14. to That was a nice bounce-back win for Great Falls. I know uh, 1A football doesn't get a whole lot of love, uh, but good for Great Falls. Nation Ford over Chapin, 47-41. to A shootout there. Boy, Chapin, defensively, they were just a struggle this year. Just couldn't stop anybody, especially on the run. But I'm going to tell you what, Chapin next year, watch out. <clears throat> Chapin's got a young, big offensive line, some guys getting some uh, uh, Power 5 offers, and you've got uh, a good wide receiver in Xavier Short. He's one of the top sophomores in the state of South Carolina. Um, he's unbelievable. I think he broke a Chapin record, if I'm not mistaken. If he didn't, he was right on the cusp of breaking that record. And then you got Roger Pajorni. I'm not sure if he's coming back, but Chapin always seems to have that quarterback that can play both ways. Uh, Roger Pajorni, a good quarterback. All right, so uh, some other scores. Westwood knocks off Richland Northeast 52-6. to I don't know the draw for Westwood, but that is a team that could make some noise. Westwood has gotten healthy. Uh, they're physical up front on defense. They have really good athletes at the skill positions. Cam Atkins, Christian Horn, who's uh, committed to play for Appalachian State. They got a north-south all-star at quarterback who's committed to play for uh, Sean Elliott over at Georgia State. Westwood could make some noise as a three seed. That is as dangerous of a three seed as you will see in the state. And I, I, know, I know there's probably others. I'm probably going to get arguments there, but watch out for the Red Hawks. Um, let's see here. Hillcrest over Malden, 23-6. Great Collegiate, they win another region championship. They knock off C.A. Johnson, 48-7. I have not seen Hunter Helms' numbers. Um, that kid is putting up numbers week in and week out. I think he threw for seven touchdowns against Eau Claire last week. But Great Collegiate, uh, back-to-back seasons, wins the region championship. Happy for former Gamecock Adam Holmes. Uh, he's a fantastic guy, and he's done a really good job with the great collegiate War Eagles. Goose Creek over Stratford, 27-7. to uh, West Side over Wade Hampton, 46-13. to So uh, West Side with uh, Scott Early at the helm, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the best characters uh, in the state of South Carolina as a head coach. He's a fun one. Uh, he gets a big win there. Pardon me. Uh, Union knocks off Emerald 35 to nothing. Union will play host to Fairfield Central, who lost to Indian Land. Indian Land got the win and secured the three seed. I'll tell you, the Warriors are pesky. They've got a couple of guys on that coaching staff that played in the NFL. And, you know, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. It's, it's, sometimes that stat is almost meaningless that a guy played in the NFL. But. I think it makes a difference in this case because you got a guy like Coach Simpson on that staff, former Gamecock, former Buffalo Bill, and you've got H.B. Blades uh, who played for the Washington Redskins uh, around 2008-09, around there. And uh, those guys are pesky, man. The Indian Land Warriors are tough outs. Uh, let's see. Travelers rest over Berea, 40-7. Sumter goes undefeated on the regular season. They defeat Irmo, 34-14. You know... I like Sumter a lot. I think the talent is there if they can clean up the penalties. Um, and depending on the draw, Sumter could very well make a run uh, in the state playoffs in Class 5A. <clears throat> Shout out to my guy Dustin Curtis uh, over at AC Flora. They knock off Dreer in the rivalry game, 55-13. to Falcons win that game. AC Flora is going to be matched up with the Walhalla Razorbacks, one of my... Uh, one of my favorite mascots in the state, the old pesky Razorbacks of Walhalla. Um, let's see. Buford over Colleton County, 31-21. North Augusta blanks Aiken, 49-0. Berkeley all over Cane Bay, 47-7. It was Andrew Jackson with a nice win over Lee Central, 22-6. Holding Lee Central and that bunch to six points. That's, that's saying something. Andrew Jackson is going to be a tough out in the playoffs. I think they'll be a two seed, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they would be behind Buford in that region, Region 4 2A. The Vols are going to be a tough out. They get a home playoff game. Uh, so watch out for Andrew Jackson out of the town of Kershaw. Gaffney knocks off Spartanburg, 63 of 14. You know, I've heard a lot about Spartanburg and whether or not they're going to be in the playoffs um, as an at large team with that at large bib. I was actually listening to uh, Jed Blackwell on ESPN Upstate. Uh, those guys do a really good job if you're in that area. Uh, ESPN Upstate has a little morning show up there, and they run down high school football. I was I was enjoying listening to that. They were talking about uh, at-large bids for Spartanburg, 
And, you know, it's tough because these at-large bids, you're talking about teams that only win one region game or two region games, and you look at non-conference schedules and you look at how close they lost to certain teams. You know, better that committee, better those people looking at that than me. I, I That's that, that's tough. Um, you know, obviously every team wants to make the playoffs, and I think the discussion was Spartanburg, Irmo, or Blythewood is what they were talking about on the radio show. I just don't know. I mean, I've seen two of those three teams, and it's hard to say who's more deserving than the other. Um, if I had to say who's more deserving between Blythewood and Irmo, I, I guess I would give the slight nod to Blythewood. Uh, but, you know, the Bengals uh, kind of went into a tailspin the last couple weeks of the season. So do you reward that? I don't know. Um, that's, that's a tough one for those guys to decide, those at-large bids. South Point over York, 48-21. to York... Um, does not make the playoffs. South Point um, uh, finishes the season undefeated. So all that talk about the Stallions struggling without their head coach, Straight Heron, and a uh, new guy comes in, Devontae Holloman, no problem there. Stallions are still loaded, still extremely talented. Uh, they are undefeated on the year. Woodruff over Clinton, 40, uh, excuse me, 17-7. Clinton will travel to play the Camden Bulldogs. I was looking at Clinton's schedule uh, and seeing who they have played. Defensively, Clinton has actually played rather well the last couple of weeks, uh, but only four wins on the year, and they sneak into the playoffs there. Uh, Gilbert over Pelion, 46-20. to 20. Uh, Let's see here. See if anything else jumps out to me. Well, this is my game. I did Buford at North Central. Um, here's the exciting game I had last night. I had a daggum running clock in the second half. <laughs> and I think that's the first time I've ever had that, I think. And that second half went rather quickly, boys and girls. Uh, so, it, I mean, even through touchdowns, they didn't stop the clock. They just kept on running. Uh, but North Central did score uh, as the game ended. Buford's just good, man. They're, for a 2A ball club, they're as big up front as you will see. Maybe Abbeville's that big up front. You know, I know Dylan, when they were in 2A, were huge up front. Now Dylan is, is uh, rightly placed in 3A. But, man, Buford's got some big kids up front on both sides of the ball. North Central was without 11 kids. Uh, they had uh, unfortunately dismissed a few off the team due to uh, discipline issues. And they missed their best player who injured his leg a week prior. Uh, Caleb Haven, watch out for that name. North Central does not get a lot of coverage. You know, my little radio station uh, that I'm uh, uh, leaving the other job for, WPUB, they're great folks over there, awesome station. They're one of the few outlets uh, that cover some of those small schools, and North Central does not get a lot of coverage at all. They're up in Bone Town in between Cass and Kershaw. Um, so North Central loses that game. They will miss the playoffs, unfortunately. All right, so let's go to Porter Gout over First Baptist, 28-14. I saw that Hammond won like their eighth straight game to end the season. Hammond, of course, will be favored in the skis of playoffs. Wilson over Marlboro County, 28-13. Wilson had struggled for a couple weeks, and they get back on track with a win there. Uh, I think Wilson's going to be a two-seed, if I'm not mistaken. Eau Claire gets their first win of the season in their last game of the year. They knock off Columbia 20-16. to Shout out to the Shamrocks and the coaching staff there. I know one of the guys on that coaching staff, Marcus McCullum, had a nice post on Facebook. A tough place to win. Everybody knows. Uh, but good for Eau Claire getting the win over Columbia. Newberry knocks off Mid-Carolina 33-21. to I'll say it every year. As long as Phil Strickland is with the Newberry Bulldogs, Newberry will be a very tough out in the postseason. They play good defense. They are physical up front on the lines. Um, they've got a good uh, little running back. They've got a really good linebacker. Um, Amari Wilson is a really good player for the Bulldogs. Uh, so uh, watch out for Newberry. They're either a two or three seed there. Uh, Fort Dorchester knocks off Somerville 35-17. to No surprise here, but I bring it up because uh, Somerville will play host to my Lugolf Elgin Demons. I'll be over at John McKissick Field for the first time in my career. I've done a Somerville baseball game, never done football, so this will be the first. And the reason Lugolf is going to Somerville is because Spring Valley, oh, they destroyed Blythewood. I think it was 42-21. I'll see if I can get the exact score. Yeah, 42-21, Spring Valley beat Blythewood. A couple things I'll take from this game. Robin Bacon is a nicer guy than a football coach, and he is a hell of a football coach. All right, Uh, so that tells you my thoughts on Robin Bacon. He's one of my favorites. 
And then you've got his offensive coordinator who he brought over from East Side, former Blythewood head coach uh, Dan Morgan. This was a homecoming of sorts for Dan Morgan because he coached Blythewood for, gosh, I think he was there eight, nine years. And you have to understand, Spring Valley went from the triple option to the spread. And talking to coaches the way I talk to them week in and week out, as much as I talk to them, rather, they try to simplify offenses for kids because, you know, depending on where you are, some of these kids aren't the brightest, you know, and, and, and that's no knock on anybody. That's just the truth. These are, these are, you know, 13, 14, 15-year-old kids. The point I'm trying to make is they completely changed up the offense from the triple option to the spread. They simplified it for them, and they lucked up uh, with an outstanding athlete at QB with DeQuandre DQ Smith, who, in my opinion, is going to be a Mr. Football candidate in two years. If he continues this play for another two years, he will be a Mr. Football candidate. He could possibly be a Power 5 QB, uh, definitely low-tier Division One At this moment, I think he's low-tier Division I. Um, I like him a lot, uh, and they really don't have the best skill players. A lot of times Spring Valley will have really good wide receivers, really good linebackers, really good DBs. They don't have that this year. They're very young. Um, Trey Peterson, uh, at linebacker, defensive end, I know he leads the Midlands with 16 uh, sacks, but uh, this is not the best defensive Spring Valley team uh, that you've seen in years past. But, man, oh, man, Spring Valley has played outstanding the last couple weeks of the season. If you think about it, uh, let's see. They've won. They had to beat Blythewood. Uh, they beat Lugoff Elgin. Uh, just to get into the playoffs, and they played outstanding. Even in the loss to Sumter, they played outstanding. Lost to Sumter by two points. No one, no one has played Sumter that close outside of Rock Hill. Uh, so give credit to Spring Valley, that coaching staff. They've done a phenomenal job over there with the Vikings. They will host a playoff game coming up this Friday night. I think they get West Side uh, coming up this Friday. So with Spring Valley beating Blythewood, that sends Lugoff Felgen to Somerville. And my quick note on this game, is Matt Campbell called me last night. He's the coach of Lugolf Elgin. You heard him on the uh, Rundown uh, podcast this week. He told me, he said, uh, he said he scored his first varsity touchdown for North Augusta against Somerville on that very field. How about that? Matt Campbell uh, was the number one prospect in the state of South Carolina as a tight end slash lineman for North Augusta in 1989. A year before they started Mr. Football and scored his first varsity touchdown on John McKissick Field. So that's pretty cool. So he will be coaching where he scored his first varsity touchdown. Another note, I might have brought this up in the rundown. <clears throat> We're on the 30-year anniversary of that North Augusta team in 1989 that won a state championship with a losing record. They started 0-6 in 1989. Ended up uh, finishing high in the region, making a run, won the state championship with a 6-7 and seven record. And Matt Campbell is preaching that to his team with the Lugoff Elgin Demons. They're going to have to be road warriors as the three seed. But Lugoff Elgin, in my honest opinion of their chances of making a run, they play physical defense. They're going to hang with anybody they play. Um, even a Dutch Fork, I think they'll hang with a little bit. I, 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 I believe that. Uh, they do the two things that nobody really does anymore in high school football. They play physical defense up front. Uh, they blitz you. They come right at you. And they also run the football right at you. They run the football right up the middle. Nobody does that anymore. Everybody's doing the spread offenses, and that's all fine and good. But Lugolf Elgin runs the two-back system, and uh, they will run right at you. And that keeps a lot of games close. Uh, so, yes, I think Lugolf Elgin has a chance to win this game. Not just my opinion from what I've seen a little bit on huddle. And talking to Matt Campbell, I think they certainly have a chance. This is not the Somerville of old. Uh, Somerville, of course, is a two seed, playing a three. So that is my quick thoughts on that one. Uh, 30-year anniversary of the North Augusta team that won with a losing record. Matt Campbell was on that team, and now he's coaching a team with a losing record in the playoffs. Cool note. All right, Camden knocks off Keenan, 65-34. to <coughs> I saw a really weird tweet by Keenan. Uh, I was debating on bringing this up. Uh, Keenan put out a tweet saying, proud of the kids for scoring 34 points. I don't know if that's a season high. It might be. And saying that they had 300 yards passing, 150 yards rushing. Uh, but, hey, you take the moral victories and move on to next season. So good for them. I, I, I can't argue that. Uh, Camden is going to be a very tough out. They're, of course, a one seed. 
I wouldn't take a whole lot in Camden giving up the, that amount of yards and points. Uh, I am a, I'm understanding that they played a lot of JV kids from someone that I texted. Uh, they brought up a lot of kids from uh, the roster that did not play <clears throat> the previous week. So they were very deep last night were the Bulldogs. Camden wins their first region championship since 2002. First outright region title since 2002. And for any high school football nerds, you know that that was the last time Camden made the state championship. They lost to Union with Eric McCullum at QB, Mr. Football. All right, Hammond over Heathwood Hall, 42-7. to uh, I mentioned this one earlier. Indian Land over Fairfield, 28-14. Indian Land has four wins on the season. Okay, follow me here. Indian Land has four wins. All four of those wins are on the road. They end the season 4-1 and one on the road. That's That's fantastic. Win a couple of region games and they get in the playoffs. Indian Land will be a tough out. Uh, River Bluff over Lexington, 37-20. We talked about that game. Uh, let's see if anything else jumps out. I haven't talked about a lot of upstate scores. There's a Midland score. Ridgeview, 35-9 over Lancaster. Blazers are going to be a tough out because of the way they play defense. Uh, Ridgeview's defense is as good as any. You'll see they returned everybody from a year ago. Uh, Perry Parks, uh, <laughs> he's uh, he's a fun one, and he's a young, exuberant coach. Uh, he gives his kids a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of personality, a lot of freedom, and 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 that kid, that that, that group of kids, is going to be jacked up for the playoffs. Ridgeview's going to be another tough out. Blazers have made some t- uh, long runs uh, in the postseason under Perry Parks. Got to respect that. Swansea blanks Edisto twenty-eight to nothing. Clover. Uh, has their first undefeated season in school history. Shout out to Clover. 45-10 to 10 over Fort Mill in week 10 of the season. You really haven't heard a lot about Clover. Um, and I don't know why that is. Maybe they just don't have that standout running back or quarterback. Maybe they just don't have that, that standout star. You, but you really haven't heard much about them. Uh, I'm curious to see what Clover does in the playoffs. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll see. That's, uh, that's 5A. <coughs> Pardon me. I know I'm still coughing. Chapman over Chesme, 35-7. There's some upstate scores. Greer over Blue Ridge, 28-7. Uh, Rock Hill over Northwestern, the old rivalry, as uh, my uh, friend Chris Miller calls it, the original rivalry, 21-14. to uh, Rock Hill gets the win over Northwestern. Rock Hill should be in the postseason with that win, I believe. Dillon over Sherall, 49-21. Mm, Greenwood over J.L. Mann, 28-14. Batesburg-Leesville, Tight over Saluda, 28-24. Uh, batesburg Leesville's had an up-and-down year. Burns blanks Boiling Springs, 28-0. Um, my guy Reggie Shaw in the upstate has done a good job with the Burns running the Rebels. We'll see what Burns does in the postseason. Not sure what draw they got. Carolina Forest over Conway, 42-13. I did want to bring this up. I did have a couple playoff matchups. Let me see if I can find it here. Um... A guy we've had on the podcast before, uh, Ian Gurren, over in Myrtle Beach. Try to bring it up here. <clears throat> Let's see. He had some of the playoff matchups. Okay, there it is. This just got released. Bengals uh, of the Blythewood. Blythewood Bengals will get an at-large bid in the 5A upper state. They will go to Lawrence. Uh, still waiting on the 5A lower and 4A at large. So that is from Lou Bajak of the state newspaper. He's always on top of it. So the Bengals will get in the playoffs. They're the at large bid. Um, Jim Baxter from SC Varsity thinks that White Knoll could get it in the lower state. I could see that. Yeah. White Knoll's win over River Bluff, I think, alone should get them consideration for the at large bid. I, I don't have a problem with that at all. I think that's. Um, and White Knoll's played a pretty tough schedule. And you also have to give uh, a little consideration to White Knoll in the sense that they lost their best player, uh, one of the best players in the state, uh, Miami of Ohio division commit, um, uh, Avion Smith. And they actually started the season, I think, 4-5-0, and something like that. All right, we got a couple of playoff matchups here. Let me see if I can find it. All right, this should be accurate. Kane Bay will go to Carolina Forest. Wando will go to Conway. And this is uh, 5A. Now you go to 4A. Lakewood will go to Myrtle Beach. North Myrtle will go to North Augusta. And Georgetown will be at Aner in 3A. Uh, so that is from Ian Guerin. Those are projected first-round playoff games. And I, I would bet he's probably pretty accurate on that. He 
he's not going to put that on Twitter uh, unless unless he thinks that's accurate. Uh, How about this? This was the end of the Crestwood-Lakewood game, and their playoff spot was on the line. Crestwood intercepted Lakewood in the end zone, returns to midfield. All Crestwood had to do was kneel, and they make the playoffs. Um, Instead, they threw a pick six, and Lakewood got in position, got the win, and Crestwood is out. Oh, good grief. Oh, man. That's a tough one. Um, Let's see. Marion over Loris, 13-6. I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to. Myrtle Beach, 35-14 to over North Myrtle. Rivalry game there over in Little River, South Carolina. Luke Doty, the Gamecock commit, I'm sure, had a big game there. Um, South Aiken defeats Midland Valley, 52-6. to Dutch Fork over White. No, I didn't even see that score till just now. 41-14, to Dutch Fork won. So, of course, Dutch Fork is undefeated. I think they've won 35 or 36, 36 straight games. I lost track, but it's around that number. Um, Dorman blanks Riverside, 38 nothing. I haven't seen the Manning score, but I know they won. And I want to give a, a shout-out to my guy, Reggie Kennedy, uh, who's the coach over at Manning. Um, this is his first year at Manning, came over from Irmo. And, of course, Reggie Kennedy's had a lot of stops. He went to Fairfield. Uh, coached at OW, coached at Blythewood, coached at Sumter. Uh, a lot of different stops for Reggie, but won a region championship as head coach of the Manning Monarchs, and that is their first region title in 12 years. First region title in 12 years for Reggie Kennedy and the Manning Monarchs, so uh, good for them. Lamar Blanks, Macby, 40 to nothing. Hartsville got a win. Hartsville has kind of bounced back after having a rough stretch. Um, Hartsville beat, I think it was Darlington. Beat them by a couple scores. See if I can get the final. Uh, 58-7. Yeah, Hartsville's kind of bounced back here in the last couple of weeks, so we'll see what they do in the playoffs. I mean, you just never know with the Red Foxes and, and the talent they have over there. And I, I'm a big fan of Jeff Calabrese. I, I'm a big fan of him, a head coach. Abbeville blanks 96, 56-0. West Florence over South Florence, 17-6. Rivalry game there. West Florence um, ends the season with a win. Um, they um, they started off hot. I think they started off 4-5-0. or five and oh. Georgetown blanks academic magnet forty nine to nothing. Uh, the Raptors in the season with a loss, and that's about it. Yeah, that's um, that's all the scores that I got there. So that's pretty good. All right, well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, those are just my immediate thoughts, reactions uh, from the game. I'm uh, from the games on week ten. I'm I'm still talking, so I'm uh, going all over the place, stumbling and bumbling through this podcast. I'm trying to see if I see any other tidbits before I end this podcast. I'm looking on Lou Bajak's Twitter feed. He does a fantastic job with the state newspaper. And, yeah, that's about all I see. So there you go. We will talk playoff matchups next week. Uh, We'll go through each playoff matchup. I'll try to have a guest and just kind of run down, um, give you my picks, uh, who I think is going to make some deep runs. I still have not seen every playoff matchup. I've, I've seen probably maybe 10. Uh, and I've heard of a couple others, but playoff brackets should be up, if not Sunday, definitely Monday morning on the South Carolina High School League website, and then we'll do a podcast and kind of run down those and uh, see what we think. So that'll do it for the Week 10 scoreboard. I want to thank you all tuning in. I uh, appreciate you all listening, and uh, we'll do it again next week, and uh, we'll look at the playoff matchups coming up this week. You've been listening and uh, checking out the Palmetto Preps podcast Check out the website, palmettopreprepsrivals.com. Great content on there. Chris Clark has been doing some highlight videos uh, on the website, so check those out. He's been doing a really good job. Um, uh, support that guy. Support that website. Um, some giving, giving kids the coverage and exposure they deserve, so he's doing a good job. All right, that'll do it. Y'all have a good weekend.